I've received a number of picture books recently and um, been thinking about doing a vlog. The only problem is I really don't like being in front of the camera, which is why I've been putting it off. To do a good review of a picture book, I think, means showing a book on a camera rather than actually writing about it. So here we are. Welcome to Dark Matter's first vlog. This is Journey from the Centre of the Earth, written by Isabel Carmody and illustrated by Mark McBride. It's all about this duck who's gone to the centre of the earth with his human and he's been left behind. And these two boys are talking about what happens in movies and how the dog and the hero are always saved, but you know, what happened to this duck? And while they're talking and they're worrying and they're comparing the treatment of ducks to other animals in movies. There are these absolutely gorgeous illustrations of this duck having an amazing adventure in the centre of the earth. So I think this is a beautiful book for, for adults, but it's actually aimed at children. I think it's one of those books that... Um, children are going to love to read again and again from a really young age. I mean, I can imagine, you know, a two-year-old loving the adventures of the duck and, and a ten-year-old. It's just a beautiful book. And the rest of the books that I'm going to talk about today are all uh, more adult books, although, you know, people of all ages will, will enjoy some of them. The next book up is the Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, The Visual Companion. And uh, yeah, it's quite a visual feast as well. And it has a foreword by Martin Freeman, who is Bilbo Baggins. It has beautiful photographs from the movie, as well as um, the, the text talking about the behind the scenes. This is actually, in my opinion, better than the um, photo companions that I have of Lord of the Rings because those photo companions, the pictures tended to be blurry, they weren't good still shots. These pictures are actually crisp and clear. They're excellent still shots. It's a fairly small book, but it's a real collector's item. I'm one of the people who's in two minds about the Hobbit movie um, because it's been the original story has been taken, it's been stretched to three movies by adding a dwarven and elven romance that was never in the original. It's um, adding stuff from the Silmarillion, all sorts of stuff that was never in the original. I was really looking forward to the Hobbit when I actually thought it was just going to be the book. Now, some people have said that the movie is great, but you have to remember it is not The Hobbit. It is more like a prequel to the Lord of the Rings movies. And it, it is not, it's not The Hobbit that we used to know. This is a beautiful addition to any collection of pop culture art or uh, photographic journals of movies. Next up, we have Totally Mad, 60 Years of Humour, Satire, Stupidity and Stupidity. Okay, now, the way they've done it is they've taken a cover or a couple of pages and they've put them, you know, for, from one issue and they've put that in isolation. So here you've got Melvin of the Apes and over the page you've got something completely different. So you don't get any complete stories. It's a showcase of some of the artwork by different people and it's kind of a catalogue of some of the different things that they've done in the past 60 years. Here you have bananas and the older people might recognise Bonanza being spoofed here. Here we have a somewhat classic mashup. It's the original Star Wars, but it is mixed in with the uh, Monica Gate scandal, as you can see here. Um, 
that was looks like that was a cover uh, for January 1999 and over here we have Board of the Rings which is a double page feature showing a number of the different characters <laughs> saying things in of itself it's um it's quite humorous but the complete story isn't there in the back of the book there's an envelope and it has a number of pictures so they, these um, look quite collectible they, they look very respectable um, framed on someone's wall Definitely some iconic images mashed up. So I'd say this, this is uh, the kind of book that is, again, it, it's a collectible item for someone who's into pop culture or um, if you're a, a long time fan of MAD, it's a beautiful collection. It's with the hard cover, lovely presentation, heavy as a brick or a couple of bricks and um, and it's a bit of fun. I wouldn't really call this toilet reading whereas a lot of the mad um, magazines would actually be classified as toilet reading. I think this is a bit heavy for that. <laughs> now here we have inside HBO's Game of Thrones. There's a preface by George R. R. Martin from page to screen, a forward by David Benioff and Dave Guas. And then we go to the wall and uh, the, the presentation here is looking vaguely gothic before we get to some beautiful pictures. It's very much a book about the series. So it's talking about the Night's Watch, for example, is laid out a lot like a newspaper might have been. Before getting down to the details of designing the wall and the castle black. Information about the characters like Jon Snow, Samuel Tarly. Then we go to House Stark. There's a family tree that might help people keep track of who's who. <laughs> Information about creating Winterfell, including some of the artwork. Ned Stark. We won't lose our heads over that one. And Caitlin Stark. Sansa, Arya and Bran. Arya is everybody's favourite little sister. <laughs> Later on we get to the Iron Throne. So we've got the traditional image of the throne as well as information about the background. Costuming Night's Landing and the, and the incredible detail they've put into the costumes. None of this half finished stuff. With the information about the Lannisters, you've got this lovely opening page for Cersei. And then it goes into design drawings for her costumes. A lot of costumers would be really interested in that. And moving on, everyone's favourite barbarian, Carl Drogo, is also presented in some detail. With the Game of Thrones you win or you die. With this particular book I'd say it's a win and I'm very happy to include that with my collection. With this particular book 
is a celebration of 25 years of The Princess Bride, the movie. This, as far as the photographic record goes, this particular book takes, uh, it sets a, a new standard. The other books that I've shown you, I, I think, are very good. This one just goes a bit further. It starts out with the grandson from the movie talking about a book. It has the images of Peter Falk as the grandfather. It's, um, I don't know how well this is picked up by the camera, but you can see this is all set out like the script, like it's a little bit battered and it's got the hole punch, holes punched in, some drawings. It's aiming to look like a scrapbook. So, so the book itself is aiming to not just be a visual record, but to, to be an artifact. I mean, obviously it's not the actual scrapbook, but as far as these things go, they've done a really good, um, they, they've presented it really well. Now there are some um, parts of this particular book that are pretty unique. Like you get here, to what looks like a photo album. So you've got these Polaroid shots and they're all set and they're, they're um, set out as if they're in a photo album and they're labelled and everything. And if you had a photo album like this with a Polaroid, well with any kind of photograph really, but without a plastic sheet over the top, you need the page in the middle to separate the two, otherwise the photos end up sticking together. And what they've done is they've gone to the extra effort of actually turning these transparency pages into a feature of their own. Now the only problem with this is that you really do need to put a, a white page underneath to be able to see that feature page properly. So it's well done. It's just not quite as, as easy as it could be. Now if you look at these, you've, you've got the um, photographs again. It's a bit of behind the scenes of the making of the movie. And it cuts away to the script. And then you've got some beautiful double page photos. These cutaway or these, these transparency pages are interspersed periodically throughout the book. And you can see that they're used as design drawings. So this is a gorgeous book. It's a great photographic record, a great celebration of the Princess Bride. And it takes these photographic records to a new level. But I would have to say that my favourite record, my favourite kind of presentation of this kind of book of all time has to be this. Now I've had this for years. It's not technically a review book. But this has got to be my favourite um, pop culture book of all time. Not only does it have absolutely beautiful artwork that I'd love to have on the wall, It has drawings that are really in the, they have the feel from the movie. It has the, the background. It's a cross between a photographic record of the movie and a bit of a documentary. And this is what I really wanted to show you. In The Princess Bride you have the transparencies, but here the transparencies aren't additional information that require a backing sheet to explore them properly. The transparencies actually overlay onto pages underneath to add more information. Here's a page where you can see the characters being developed with these sketches and the text tells the story of what happened and how the two creatures, the two species, came to be. 
This really is a gorgeous art book. It's more a focus of a celebration of the art than anything, I think. It's the kind of book you can have sitting on your coffee table, although you probably don't want to risk people spilling their coffee or kids ripping it up. <laughs> It's kind of, it's more about the story than it is about the, um, about the making of it. But this is such a gorgeous book. And here's a beautiful example of the artwork. I'd love to get that image framed on my wall. It's just, it's such a, it, this book, aims to add to the dark crystal world. It's less a documentary and more about adding depth, celebrating the movie, adding to the story. And in an envelope in the back of the book There's an additional little book. It's kind of like a sepia version of a sketchbook. Mmm, it's starting to develop that old book smell. <laughs> I've had it for so long. <laughs> So the world of the dark crystal is is less a photographic record of making the movie and it's less about the actual making of the movie it's more about adding depth to the story talking about the individual characters showing gorgeous artwork it's a, it's a celebration of the movie well i didn't get the kids books that were out at the time but I've got this. So that's a wrap up of Dark Matter's first vlog. If you're interested in art books, I hope this has been interesting for you. Um, let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's anything you'd particularly like to see in a vlog. Give me some feedback. This is all scary new ground for me. So, you know, tips on improving would be good. And I just brought Smokey in to say hello. She was just sleeping in the lounge room because it's all a bit warm today. So, say hello, Smokey. Meow. And she's being contrary kitty. Bye.